Hey y'all, it's me. Stop dropping rolling and I'm doing a quick check-in. Already, these calls about this reunion is getting to be just skyrocketing is the word that came to mind, but I just couldn't articulate it right then. Anyway, I needed to come on and come on. Now I'm done with that. Now, Kay Kimberly, 2004, asked me to give y'all an update about the back call. We got out there, and when we got out there, and I told y'all I have to work with Pierre about certain things because he, he, like I said, this stuff with older people, he just don't get it. I'm trying to help him. I, and I, too, you know, realized that there's some things that he's going to have to just learn how to deal with. And I'm going to have to let him bump heads. And they did a little bit of that yesterday, and I had to just sit back and let her feel him, the wrath, and her and him feel her. Interesting. I tried to get a picture with him because she was determined she was going to hold his hand and walk. I was Like I told y'all, I got second billing when it comes down to them two unless it's a problem. Then I get called in. I'm like the, just a little background medic. You come in here and fix this and then, you know, get in your thing and go leave. Anywho, we got out there and little thing was looking cute. I, I should have said something to her, but I was just looking at her and thinking it, but my mind was everywhere, and I never did tell her she had on a little captain hat, looked like a little version, little brown version of Captain and Tennille, she was, she had the captain's hat on, but you know what I mean, and it was white, and then she had her little sunglasses on, made my sunglasses look like a hot mess, and um, she had a little lipstick on, which I had some lipsticks I needed to give her, and I forgot to give them to her. I got so caught up in these things that their Aunt Pierre was pulling. And um, and they did so much, y'all. This was like five and a half hours of scranktonism. And so um, after we got out there, she went in there and pulled on the rest of her stuff, and she had the rolling walker, and he's asking her if she's going to take this uh, cart thing and I'm like, why would she, she don't need to take that. And she's like, no, I'm going to take this cane, some cane her daughter and bought her. And she's convinced that this cane will stand up when she take her hand off of it. Well, all day long, it was take your hand off the cane and the cane go over. So I got plenty of stretching exercise to my quads and glutes on yesterday from bending over picking the cane up. Because Pierre just flat out act like he didn't see it. And I wasn't going to stress her to have to do it. And then you topple over like a, well, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. So you just topple over. Like, we're not doing that today. First, we put up the magnetic thing. I don't know why I had to assist with that, but I did end up having to assist Pierre with that. It was a one-man job, but it turned into a two-man job, so I'm over there, move this up, move this up, move this over here. It wasn't, It didn't take all that. This was supposed to be something that you do without tools. It's these little sticky tape things, and then you got these two curtains that just snap together like this. I'm trying to figure out why this was necessary, but she kept saying that when she tried to go out on her little patio, little bugs be trying to come in and stuff. And I'm like, well, from what I can see, I'm thinking the bugs can still come in if they want to. But if you think this is going to help, so be it. But when we left, I realized that three other neighbors had this same little get up. So y'all read between the lines and put it together. They got, therefore, I need. Now she got it. We put the thing up, and I had Pierre go ahead and use some of the sticky things to secure it in the right way. But she come to me, well, here's a little hammer that you probably need to put this up because she didn't want the sticky things at the top. She wanted these little pin things across the top, just specific on how she needs this done. And she pulled out this little hammer that looked like something 
you know them little gem hammers they give you when you go on to like dig for uh, gemstones and stuff, little picks? That hammer looked like something that would be used by... Actually, you know, when kids was in kindergarten and they had them little things, it was a little wooden stool and it had these things. And you learning shapes and stuff like this round thing goes in here and this go. And it had a little hammer that went to it. That's what that hammer looked like. And the hammer was about this big around on the head. And I, and, um, I told Pierre, was like, well, let me hammer that right there. He gonna hammer while I'm holding. I was like, oh, contraire, mon frere. This is not gonna go down like this. I'm not leaving here handicapped today. Here he come in here. And so he's coming. I sure do appreciate that. You just want to come in here and video bomb me. But then when you realize what was going on, it wasn't enough to make you back out the thing. That's what a respectful spectator does. No, you wasn't either. Anyway, I'm back, y'all. Y'all see what that goes. So, um, he's supposed to be out getting some of this stuff that he's supposed to have as the grill master. And he's also the waffle maker. But, for the reunion. And I'm going to pray to the Lord of the harvest that everybody remains upright. Him behind these waffles because he like to make waffles really dark. Everybody don't like dark waffles. So I'm going to have to be on the waffle stand, too, to make sure that people don't be walking around with something that look like ground beef that's supposed to be a waffle. He like dark waffles. Don't nobody like that. But And he got them over there at Waffle House. They know when he come in there, I don't go over there no more because it's too much. Yo, if you go over to Waffle House with the stuff that they do over there, you your day is just ruined. Anyway... Back to what I was talking about before I got interrupted because he came in here and ink come in there trailing right behind him like she's the backup. Don't nobody need all that. We got the thing hung up. I put that little pickaxe back over there in the basket. That's what I'm talking about. The hammer was so small and fit in a little oval uh, basket. I don't even know it. Like I said, pickaxe, a miniature pickaxe. So we got that straight now. And then I was like, we need to get going. To uh, so you can get where you need to go. Well, she Pierre had told me when we got there, she's getting in the back seat, and I said, Don, you don't uh, do you know, people like older people like that. The little ladies need to get in the front. I said, and as far as I'm concerned, if you got a little gentleman going, they get in the front, they get front bit, you know, dibs on riding shotgun. I'm telling you, she need to be in the back seat. And I said, I'm telling you how it's going to go down. I'm just trying to give you fair warning. So you won't be sitting up here and we stand out here in this heat arguing about a seat. And then when the medical services come because she laying on the pavement, they're going to say, well, why, why is this like this? And then I'm going to have to tell them the reason why we got this heat situation exhaustion thing going on is because these two are yelling about who going to sit in the front seat. I tried to tell him on that. She comes out and he going to open up the back door because he going to prove a point to me. Now, I'm just trying to tell you how it went down. Y'all asked for an update. And he opened that back door. Come here, Pierre. Since you came in here. you open, Come on around here. Uh-uh. We, we finna tell the truth. So he's supposed to know I'm not making up nothing. When you went Come on here and stop. When you went yesterday, you opened up the back chair, the back door, didn't you? Mm hmm What was you finna insert in that back seat? Well, I thought you Miss Chitlin. Yo, well, yeah. Okay, and when Miss Chitlin decided, what did she say to you? I I said it in he opened up the back door like he was some little usher doing this in the Baptist church. Y'all know what I'm talking about. How they do this and put their hand up and then go like this to try to tell you, come in here and then go here and sit down. They got a seat designated for you because they trying to fill up the sanctuary in an orderly manner. <laughs> he opens the back door and she do just like how they do in the church. And then start pointing, 
you know how it go. I know, and I'm not speaking from nothing except for experience. And to be totally honest, I've done it before myself, but y'all didn't hear me say that. But stop, honey, stop. Oh, Lord, this is Pierre's cat, and she is a nuisance. Anyway. He opened up that back door thinking she was going to go back there. And she's standing up there like, well, do you want me to sit in the back seat? And I said, I just told her, I said, come on here and open up. Let me open up this front door. and Because I was just standing there looking at the standoff. And I'm just, it's just like, all things was missing was for the both of them to have a holster. And the tumbleweed just go, you know how on the westerns and the tumbleweed just go going down the street and then the shootout starts. We're not going to do this. I opened up the front seat. I said, come on and get in the front, honey. It's hot out here. And you get on up in that front seat where you supposed to be at. All right. And then she popped her little self in that little seat just like a little juju bee and sat down. And then he came around there. Are you all in? And I just looked at him. I said, yeah, and I'm about to put you in on that other side, too. It was just classic. And I told him what was going to happen. But see, he don't ever believe me. So, we got past that. Then she took us all the way real far from my house. To all these stores that she wanted to go to. That we didn't know she was going to. Because we thought we was going to do one-stop shopping. And I started thinking about it. And I said, it probably was Jesus intervening on my behalf. He do things like that. God, you know how it goes. Because she probably couldn't walk around in Walmart, but my concern would have been her in the cart. Because I don't know about her driving skills. And we're not going to do all this bucking and dodging and knocking canned goods and stuff off shelves. Because your driving skills in these carts ain't up to par. And I don't think they made for a driver and a passenger. It's one person in the thing. So we probably did came out all right on that. Now to the television. That was, we ended up back home. We worked at her house. We worked on the TV. I ain't no we. Pierre did. And she started in wanting me to make him a sandwich. I said, he don't need a sandwich. He don't need that. He, You need him to stay alert and aware of the circumstances and what you asking him to do. Well, do you need a, a soda? And I said, no, you don't need no soda. He can have, he needs some water. We all need water. We've been out in this 9,000 degree heat. Fahrenheit and Celsius mixed together. And she said, I'm there, well, he said he needs a Coke. You know, we just bought a Coke. Will you go in there and make him a Coke? And I was just like, this seemed like a deja vu from last Sunday. You know, and... I, I just got up, and, and Pierre turned around and looked at me and did this little sheepish grin, and I looked at him, and I said, you got to go home with me. You might want to, don't, don't do this. Don't do it. So I went there and made the coke. He worked on TV, but she was still upset. I'm just so upset that I'm not going to be able to look at, and she started naming all these shows that she had taped, that she still ain't. So you still in mourning from Pictures lost, so we got the people on the phone. The little man is supposed to come. Somebody's probably going to come out there today and see if we can get this stuff restored and straightened out. Will it work? It is my prayer. Because next Sunday, I won't be here for us to go out there and do whatever. And I either comfort her in her time of upsetness. Because she was just, and we trying to, and again, she started telling us about all the James Bond movies she had taped. And I'm like, your nephew got every James Bond movie save one. You can borrow whatever it is, or we can get you. I already know what she going to get for Christmas. I'm going to find her a James Bond trilogy or something like that because this seems to be just so important. Y'all, that is an update on the back call. And a few other things that went on. We're going to get a call. And we got a call from Pierre's mama after we had been home about 35 minutes. This is why I'm telling you. These two little things play off of each other. One is in another state. This one is down here. And this one calls like, <laughs> I got your baby to come over here and do something for me. Then it sets this one off in the other state. And then it's... 
and we caught in the middle. So that one, the mama called to let us know that we she was aware that we had went out there to the sister's house. And so now she want us to get a ticket and come where she is. That's next. I'm telling you, I've been in this for so long. I need to just, I don't know what I need to do. But right now, I need to get out of here. Y'all have a good day. That's the best update I can give you on what happened because I'm still reeling from it a little bit. I slept like a doggone rock last night. And it, it's more to come. I can just feel it all in my filler. Toodles. Where? Oh, here it is.